and, and, and because God cannot be afflicted, God will respond. Come on, are we here? In Hebrews 4, verse 15, the Bible says, We do not have a high priest that is not touched by the feelings of our infirmities. So when I have a bad experience and I am standing right before God, it touches God. It touches God. Your language shall be God is aware. Are we here? Whatever the devil is showing you your heart, showing you your eyes, you should be able to maintain a simple culture. God is aware. Can I hear you say it? Shout it like you mean it. And once you said it, God will hear it. Yes, so I'm, I'm aware. Don't worry. I am allowing the devil to do his best. I will come to it. Praise God. May every sin designed by the devil to frustrate you receive double frustration. In all the affliction, he was afflicted. And what did he do when he was afflicted? He noted that the devil was there because his presence was no longer felt there. Did you capture that? So what did God do? And, and the angel of his presence saved them. So what did God do? God simply sent an angel whose name is called the angel of his presence. He's an angel of intervention. And that is why the church is trying to build you up as an estate of God where God can dwell by his spirit. Because not everybody is qualified to have access to angels. But when your heart becomes purified and ready for God, you can see angels in the afternoon. Praise God. You can see angels in the night. No one ever worship God with bitterness and, um, you know, carnality and sissy glory. God dispatched the angel of his presence. He said, go there and take over. Once God appeared, all evil connections and dominion will disappear. And the affliction will cease. Lift up your right hand. In all the affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence was sent to save them. Lord, in my affliction, look down and send to me the angels of your presence. And send to my house the angel of your presence. And say to my business, the angel of your presence, for intervention. Can you go ahead and begin to talk to God? Lidea Pakaramande Zugada Lord show forth in my affliction Lord show forth in my condition Lord show forth in my moment Glorify your name Send your angel of your presence Frustrate my frustration Terminate my burdens. Be a reproach to my reproach. Arise and manifest your glory. Irabada prokosikata. Iledededede payagadaba. Iramane katia katalaba. Ikekosu prokapa. Irakagagagagaga. Thou shalt go before me this week. 
Thou shalt go before me this week. Thou shalt manifest yourself. Thou shalt manifest your power. Thou shalt manifest your glory. Thou shalt manifest your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I see the angel of God go before you this week. If your amen can be louder, your answer shall be faster. Every altar behind your affliction, I send fire and I command them to be consumed in the name of Jesus. Beginning from today, the angel of your help, angel required to rescue you and deliver the package God has designed for your heart is releasing to your life. Every conclusion that the year has made on your life, angel of intervention shall revert the conclusions. In the name of Jesus, beginning from this afternoon on Sunday, the work you will begin to do tomorrow will begin to show forth on your phone. People shall be connected to your destiny, connected to your business, connected to your burden. Things shall be easy for you. Every tough situation you've handled last week shall become your first testimony this week. Solution has been released. And just a solution are gone ahead of you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I want to quickly explain to you to prepare for your feast of Ingarin. To prepare for your feast of Ingarin. Prepare for the feast of Ingarin. That's the topic of what I want to share with you. Prepare for the feast of Ingarin. Now, God has given an instruction to the Israelites Years back, I told you that the secret of the Feast of Ingarin began when Moses made this, the mistake of breaking the ark. I mean, breaking the Ten Commandments. When he went up the first time, so many priestly and Levitical laws were not given. Alright? Were not given. God just wanted them to know the basic rules that can enable them to work with him. But when Moses broke it due to anger, a man who had just returned from God, the first thing that confronted him was anger. And God felt that Moses was not broken. Moses was not what? You might be so nice in the church. You may be so submissive and so committed. But there may be a place where anger is holding your destiny. Come on, are we here? It might cause a delay in all of your world. It may cause a barrier in all of your world. You imagine a man who has sacrificed 40 days in a mountain without water, without food. In a, in a sacred meeting with God. Only to come back and hear a sound in his house. Praise God. He couldn't believe that could be his house. He couldn't believe that could be his church. In fact, it was a, a noise of, of sin. The noise was so loud that the people were celebrating sin. With the conclusion that Moses have died and will never return. A normal person, when you have lost your leader, will you not mourn him? Will you not ask God to explain to you? Then they were celebrating and dancing. In that anger, he forgot that he was carrying a table of stones where God's finger has written a law. Alright? And by the time he stoned it on the calf they were dancing to as an adult, it caught fire. And the fire consumed almost thousands of them. And by the time after the judgment of fire, 
He looked for the law which he cherished and labored for 40 days. He couldn't find it. And he went back to God and said, God, what will I do? Have God said you are angry? Another 40 days. There's so much pain in repeating the class. When we are asking you to give us some things, you think it's a joke? If you are not tired of the level you are, continue the way you want. And prepare to go repeat the next level. My prayer is that in the new year, none of you will repeat a class. The grace of God has level. When God has brought you to a level of grace, he doesn't expect you to go down below it. Proverbs 4 verse 18 says, The path of the just man shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. The expectation of God is rapid progression. Are we here? You may progress today, better progress tomorrow, better progress next tomorrow. Don't tell God, you know I was angry, so I behaved like that. God doesn't hear it. In Ephesians 4 verse 26 says, Let not the sun go down before you are up. And he said, be angry, be sin not. At what time does an anger become a sin? When it becomes a habit. Every morning you are angry. Every afternoon you are angry. Where is your Christianity? Look at what it cost Moses. Another 40 days out of his house. Another 40 days in the mountain. And this time, the first time, Joshua went with him. The second time, he must go alone. Nobody will go with him. So he had help in the first time. In the second time, he's not going to have the help. Now, it was in that second time that he received the law of the feast of ingathering. God said, I thought they can live based on my law. But now, they need to be coming back to me for refilling. They need to be coming back for me for testing. They need to be coming back to me for examination. Give us Exodus 34. Exodus 34 and verse 22. Exodus 34, verse 22. We're going to take it to verse 24. I will be done there. Then just give, make a summary somewhere and we're done. Praise God. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks. The feast of weeks simply means the time of convention. The time of convention. Where you come for revival, renewal, and impartation. It is called the Feast of Weeks. How many of you were in the convention this year? Right? That is one of the compulsory times of meeting with God. Number two. Of the first fruit. I didn't say. Of the first fruit of wheat harvest. How many of you paid your first fruit this year? Right? There are so many things you must know that God says you must do. Whether we preach it or we don't preach it, by now it's supposed to be a culture. You see, I've taken my time now this year. I didn't, want, I didn't bother dwelling, preaching to you about Thanksgiving. I can't be talking to you like kindergarten every year. It's something that has made you who you are. Praise God. And you should be able to know. So he said, the first fruit is the second, is the first appearance. The feast of which is the second appearance. And the last appearance, and the feast of ingathering. Someone say ingathering. At the year's end, the feast. Why is it a feast? Everybody that is named after God in Israel, no matter where they are, they have to return. They have to return. It's a feast. So it is beyond thanksgiving. You must show gratitude to God with attitude of gratitude. Attitude of gratitude. Gratitude must be demonstrated with an attitude of gratitude. Praise God. Why are you a living being? Because your life is left on your body. You were able to navigate your way and do few things you're supposed to do. Travel where you're supposed to travel. Help situation where it's supposed to help situation. It's, it was, it's not by your power. Everyone in Israel supposed to return back to God with 
a measure of an act of gratitude as God has dealt with them during the year. God expects it. First fruit simply say, this is the first harvest of the year that God has permitted me to have. So I return it to God as an act of covenant commitment. But the Feast of Incarnate say, come and show God gratitude for how much he has helped you from January to December. Those days, Israelites were farmers. I want to correct some things. Those days, Israelites were what? And they were farmers on wheat. So when they were coming, they would come with a basket of wheat. Basket of wheat. They don't have money. And that is what they come. And when they come, they will drop it at the altar of God. And the priest will take them from them and burn them. The priest doesn't take them to go and eat. Are you hearing me? Why do they take it from them and burn them? And why do they burn them? They burn them as burnt offering. Praise God. In Catholic church, that's what they call Ash Sunday. All right? Now, that is taken from some sacrificial things that was presented to the church that they burned. Are we here? And pack the ashes. So those ashes are elemental forces of sacrifice given to God that the priests now use to power the church. Are we here? And by their faith, it works for them. So what does it cost when you bring such wheat into the altar and is received and is burned to ashes? It becomes a burnt offering. What does it do? It powers the altar. So that the altar will radiate the presence of God to lead them in the years ahead. But religiously, we misinterpreted that culture. And you now see that when we're growing up, Thanksgiving become a culture of bring yam. Bring plantain. Bring rice. Okay? It became focused on helping the man of God as if the man of God is hungry. I was in one Thanksgiving one year. And when I got into that church, from, from the altar, the edge of the altar to the end, we are yams. And when they finished all the leaders, ministers, and elders that even brought the yam lined up to share the yam. And I asked the man of God, what is all this? They loaded my car with the yam. I carried it. You see, there's nothing about Thanksgiving than the memory of the Thanksgiving. Are we here? It happened to us when we were starting in Abulado. Our members were so conscious of that and so on and so forth. But as we were growing up, I studied another Bible. The Bible is in the book of um, Genesis, where we read this morning. Praise God. Genesis chapter 8. Bring it because we'll soon round up. Genesis chapter 8, verse, 50, verse 20. Verse 20. You should be able to see that the, the Noah did not did not appear to the altar of God until he came out from the flood. Alright? So the, the feast of incarnation is also set up toward the end of the year, toward the end of the season. As you are coming out of the season, you give God thanks in arrears of what he has done and in advance of the remaining things he is to do. Praise God. Now look out here. And Noah built an altar. Why did he build an altar? Because there was no altar. And why? Because you want to give God thanks. And you don't give God thanks outside an altar. The most important thing in Thanksgiving is touching the altar. Noah built it, what? Are you with me? May you become altar builder. Altar builder. 
He built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast. Are you here now? Clean beast. Every clean beast here means he didn't say and took a clean beast. He took of every clean beast. Interpret it. There were goats there. There were cow there. There were sheep there. They were fowl there. What did they do? One, 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 or more than one from each of the group of animals. He took them. He took also clean fowl and offered burnt offering. Underline the word burnt. Burnt offering on the altar. Right? Now, how can he take maybe five cows? Five goat, five sheep, five fowl. Bring them to the altar of God where and burnt them. Why? Is it not a waste? It looks like a waste. But it's not a waste. It's a culture of empowering the altar. So the time of thanksgiving of the stomach is over. Did the time of returning thanksgiving to the altar. What did God do after Noah had done what he did? Look at verse 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. Which means God received the burnt offering. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore. For my sake. It means that there was, there was a cause on the ground where Noah was living. The, 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 the ascension of the power and smoke of the thanksgiving broke the cause. In this year's thanksgiving, every cause holding your prosperity shall be broken. Oh, we do warfare on Sunday. Somebody will say, I think it's the same at thanksgiving. My revelation are increasing. There's a time to place a demand on God. Are we here? Why did this happen? They would have said, Angel came down and began to greet Noah. God came down and looked for his problem and saw that there was a cause on the earth where Noah was living. And the Bible said, God removed the cause. What is cause? Because it's a restriction, a limitation, a barrier. The whole man against his will. You can't go to God's altar and be a slave to altars. Where there's a cause, altars will take charge to make sure that the cause is separated. By the grace of God, in our 2023 Feast of Incarnate, Every cause on your life, on your marriage, on your prosperity, it shall be broken. I've told myself I won't be a pastor that we can show you just to be able to meet my needs. No. Many of you are so decent in your heart that when God commands you, you hear. Praise God. And I believe that my need will be a burden in the heart of people. But the business of the altar should be the altar. So that when we get it right, we shall live right. Thanksgiving is not just coming in to decorate my pastor. It's coming in to appear before God. And to appear before God's altar. What did he say again? For the imagination of man's heart is evil. From his youth. Neither will I against meet anymore. Every living thing as I have done before. So God decided to review. His relationship with man. He said I shouldn't expect too much from them. But I should be able to leverage. On my mercy. In dealing with man. God began to introduce. An elemental. Transcendental mercy. In his connection with man. In this year's. Altar of thanksgiving. God's mercy shall find you. Are you here? Now what is the last one? 22. 22 there said, Why the eight remained? Huh? 
Why was 22 not said before 20? Why did it remain in seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease? Let me summarize what that means as we close. I have it in my note here. Now, the summary of this is this. Noah, this is my summary of the entire message. He built an altar. Are we here? He took choice animals from the ark. Your house, your storehouse, your business, your bank account. To sacrifice to God on the altar. On the altar. Are we here? Number two, he mobilized all his members of his family to appear before God to the altar. Because the Bible says he took his wife, he took his children, all of them appear. You will be complete together by this time next Sunday. In the name of Jesus. What is next? God's response. He received the sacrifice of Noah. God shall receive your sacrifice. He revoked the cause of Genesis chapter 3 on the land. Every cause in your foundation shall be broken. He renewed his covenant of fertility. When he said, uh, as far as the earth remains in seed time, God has caused the earth to bring tons and tistos. Are we here? Where you labor, you will not see good harvest. When you do business, you will not see good profit. God decided to reverse it. God decided to rebook it. I am saying this to you so that you put a demand on the word of God. Are we here? He said, as long as you have appeared before me in the altar of thanksgiving for saving you from the flood, after the whole earth has been destroyed, you can't, you can't count how many people that have died this year. Yet you are counting and you are living. That's the reason why you have a, a very, you know, a very good reason to appear before this altar. God has said in Genesis that his weight shall the man live, that the earth shall bring it, shall, shall, that the earth is caused to bring forth tongues and testos. But after the thanksgiving, he reversed the cause in Genesis 3. It shall not bring fertility, it shall not bring productive result it shall not bring gains where you have traded he also said that the season will favor Noah and his family are we here the remaining season of december this year shall favor your family shall favor your family shall favor your marriage shall favor your business are we here it's a cold and winter no matter the cold no matter the winter you will be exempted he said, night and day. God will no longer allow situation to be tough on your situation. Your day shall not be a night to you. Your night shall not be a day to you. Your destiny shall enjoy the law of creativity. The law of creativity. In the name of Jesus. Are we here? Our son, that will be showing you the blessings of this Thanksgiving. In the same Exodus, we began to read. Praise God. Let me not hold you here because we have a busy day today. And I pray that as you set your heart to touch this altar, this altar will carry your bottom. And this altar will keep you from altars. So how do I touch this altar? Are we going to do burnt offering? It's Thanksgiving that when we finish it, are we here? Value will be reproduced on this altar. I saw my wife and some other women working to beautify it. Meaning that in their heart, what we have done was not enough. There are a lot of things that we are trying to do. Now, every Sunday we spend 55,000 naira on diesel and fuel. Sometimes our offering is less than 20 something or 30 something thousand. 
So how are we powering? We are thinking we have to get out of it. And we are thinking that we will put solar in the church. Is that okay? And we have gotten the engine. What we need now is the panels and the battery. I was asking Chidi, what, how many parties say we need about 30 something panel? So let's start from somewhere. So at least we can get out from somewhere. So every investment made on this house is a torch on this altar. Praise God. When our ministers are labor for us from January to now, and they have to be rewarded, we will go to market and buy them rice and buy them yam. Praise God. And share for them. The important thing is, tie your offering to the altar of God. Believe God to use you to minister to the need of his house. That is how to touch the altar. When you touch the altar in this modern time, the altar will bear the burden of your body. And everywhere you go, the altar will be speaking. The voice of this altar will not be quiet on your life. Will not be quiet on your house. Will not be quiet on everything named after you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I have spoken. Get on your feet. If you have any question, come to my office. Were you blessed? Lift your hands and just give thanks to God. Great is thy faithfulness. O Lord, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with you. Thou changest not. Thy compassion, the fell not. As I have been. Now forever we will. Great is thy Great is thy Morning by morning No messes I sing All I have Please, I saw a vision. You know, we've been in church last night. Somebody here borrows money to someone who came desperately asking for the help. And the time he promised to pay the money has long expired. And the money will tie to an important project in your life. You became very angry. You became very angry about the situation. And I saw the person consulting an altar to manipulate your mind. And he came back to you, gave explanations. You ignore what he has delayed to pay. And you went and borrowed him another money. And you keep borrowing him money under spell. To help people is good. But a manipulated help is a revelation of your spiritual weakness. You will be able to design and know the capacity of people that comes to you. This week, it doesn't matter the urgency that people may have and run to you to borrow the money. Please, don't borrow anyone money. You may call me a wicked pastor. No problem. You can dash money that you might not bother about. Are we here? Many people borrowing money right now can't pay. Help within the leverage of grace you can ignore. Praise God. 
but don't go and touch your capital and go down the world is becoming so wicked secondly don't show your phone to strangers are we here you could run into problem you might not come out from i don't have time now to tell you of one story but there was somebody that had a situation and they wanted to show a stranger whose car looked like his car and suddenly they snatched his phone and when they snatched the phone they accused him to have stolen a manhood it only only the intervention of god that the man was saved Miss our IT department over your WhatsApp usage to secure it. There are a lot of scanners that are manipulating the WhatsApp page. They can enter your bank account if you don't know how to use the three-way authentication. So you meet any of our young graduates or IT to help you do that on your phone praise god they can enter you through insecure platforms that you belong do you hear what i said in that dream i intervened and i told that man that he has to pay that money or he will die all right and that is also saying to you that expect the money that is hanging on your head to be dropped for the sake of the thanksgiving, the Lord shall prepare you for thanksgiving. Miraculously, the hanging debt will be paid. Lift up your hands. Lord, I prepare the church to appear before you in the altar of thanksgiving. Therefore, every altar of pain and sorrow before me and my people in this coming week let it be frustrated in Jesus name every altar measured in our name for evil let the angel of the present persecute the altars let the altar be set on fire be born to ashes in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanksgiving to God is received with a positive attitude. Father, I pray that you will give our people a cheerful attitude to plan and prepare themselves for the Thanksgiving and that they appear manifest your glory. Amen. I lift up the Thanksgiving committee from their leadership to all the membership none of you shall be distracted none of you shall be hindered the bible said that your power shall be bright and continue to be brighter until the final day the glory of the thanksgiving shall fill this altar and god shall remember you and your family on every perspective in the name of Jesus. And as you appear before the Lord in this altar of thanksgiving. Every altars or causes. Altars that your name have been tied. To be restricted and afflicted and limited. I declare that those altars shall be frustrated. This altar shall not be silent on your behalf. As we lighten this altar and take away pressure from our finances the lord shall lighten your home he shall lighten your house he shall take away pressure from your life pressure from your family he shall make work easy for you and now as you labor your labor will not lack needed results as you labor as you labor you will see visible values you will be prosperous things shall be easy for you and the hand of god shall be mighty upon your life i pray for those of you 
that they are manipulating in altars. Everyone visiting altar with your name to manipulate you against your will, to take what belongs to you without your consent. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I call forth. I call forth. I call forth. I call forth. You are blessings from the four winds. In this week of Thanksgiving, the wind of blessing will blow on your life. We blow on your name. We blow on your family. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's something I want our church to do before our Thanksgiving. And we can do it today. Praise God. I told you that they made me the chairman of um, the Thanksgiving committee in the PFL state. They made me the chairman. They have finished the secretariat. The secretary was donated by Deeper Life with 250 million, a church like ours. Praise God. Gave the PFN 250 million and they bought that secretariat. And they, they gave us another 60 million to begin to re re renovate it. Now they have finished the hall up. The town has five offices. All they need there is tables and chairs and fans. Praise God. I believe that it's a corporate altar where all the fathers of the Pentecost in this nation gathers to pray to God. It will be good. The thing they listed that they will do is to furnish the five offices, get dispenser water for the chairman's office, dispenser machine, okay, for the chairman's office, and rock. I will want us to give a free will offering towards the PFN Thanksgiving. Praise God. We should be targeting to either buy a dispenser on the behalf of our church. Praise God. At least in that office or buy one of the table and at least just leave it there. If every other church do the same, that place will be okay. But the important thing is to be speaking corporately on our behalf. Okay, so if we can get 100,000 and plant there, will that, that not be good? All right, so whatever you can give, please come and give before I go down. Did you hear me? It's a free will offering. If you don't give, no problem. If you have, come and give. Let us respond to it. Thank you, Tony. God, leave it in the altar. Don't use your offering for it. Oh. If you use your offering for it, you are cheating yourself. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. The account number, please put, put on uh, my private account. Put my private account on the screen. You can transfer to the CIS2 account. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a culture of life that I live. It's good to receive, but it's also good to respond. I believe in corporate meetings. I believe in corporate altars. Pastor Abraham, please come. This is important. I'd like you to come and handle this. Uh, Shedra, can you put the account on the screen? Some people are asking for the account number. Part of the money.
And remember I said if you don't give there's no problem if because God has not prepared you and positioned you to give okay no don't give us the church account we pass through a lot of protocol to take the money it's next tomorrow program put my private num- my private account my access account that end with this too Shedrach Okay. May every prayer shared at that state altar or the BFN have access to your life, have access to your business, have access to your family. Every comfort that makes the administration of the body of Christ, the BFN in Nigeria, to go well, may it have a direct reflection on your life your family your business and all you represent in jesus mighty name amen so please make the transfer the account will be on the screen shortly